This is Danny Flexen here for Second Out. Delighted to be joined by former world title challenger, British champion, Olympic gold medalist, of course, Luke Campbell. MBE, let's give him his full title. Luke, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very good. Um, how's life in retirement treating you? You keeping busy? Uh, yes. Keeping busy is the easy bit. It's uh, I'm probably more busy now than I've ever been before, which is good. I'm not complaining. Um, funny though, everyone thinks that now you've retired from boxing, that's it you don't do now. <laughs> what what's taking up the majority of your time? What's that? Sorry. What's taking up the majority of your time? Um. I've got, a few, I've got a fair few businesses that I do. Uh, I'm a property developer, so I've got a portfolio of properties. Um, I own a gym, a um, 24-hour fully functional gym that I'm growing. Um, so I'm, I'm on to my second and possibly my third gym coming up soon. Uh, I'm an ambassador of a, another company in the city called Connexin. So I'm getting more and more involved with that business, which is brilliant. So, and then obviously just family commitments, golf, you know. <laughs> uh, How's your handicap going? Bikes, doing a bit of fun, you know, just uh, living a little bit. Holidays. <laughs> <laughs> How's your uh, handicap going? Is it coming down at all? Yeah, it is, yeah. I, do you know what? I haven't had, I haven't had that many. Um, I probably only played about eight, eight round, eight, probably eight, eighteen holes, um, and I'm probably about twenty six handicap, twenty, twenty five. So it's it's not bad, but it's, it's coming down. Good stuff. I wanted to ask you about a few bits and pieces in the boxing world. I'm sure you've still got half an eye on it. Um, this weekend we see Joe Cordina going for a world title for the first time. What would you make of Cordina and the task facing him on Saturday? I think Joe Cordina is a class act. Um, I'll be certainly rooting for him. Um, I think he's a very skillful, very talented guy. Um, uh, and I believe that he's, um, he can certainly win on Saturday. I don't know too much about his opponent. I've never seen his opponent. I don't know who it is, but I do believe Joe Cordini is a very talented fighter. We saw um, Tank Davis get a, another highlight reel knockout at the weekend against Ronnie Romero. He had, had to put up with some stick in the early rounds, but, but got him out of there in good fashion. What, what did you make of that? And what do you make of Tank generally? I've, I've only seen the, um, the highlights. Um, you know, I think I think he presents himself very well. Um, he's, he, I think everybody knows he carries a lot of power, uh, and he's a skillful guy. I mean, reading the comments um, that Rowley was saying that he, he won all six rounds and then just got caught in one shot. Well, that's boxing. It's, it wasn't a six-round fight; it was a twelve-round fight, and he got knocked out. And Ryan Garcia, your old rival, has called out Tank after that fight for a, for a showdown. Would that mouth-watering prospect for you? What's that, sorry? Uh, Tank fighting Ryan Garcia. Would you be excited about that fight? Yeah, I think it would be, uh, be a huge fight for boxing. It's two huge names um, in the lightweight division, probably, probably the... Well, they are. They, 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 them two are the two biggest names in lightweight division, other than Lemachenko. Um, I think that would be a great fight. Obviously, Tank's got power. But I fancy Ryan Garcia. I think he's got more in the tank. He's, he's, got, he's, he's faster than him. I think he can punch with both hands, not just one. Um, so I fancy Garcia to do the job. There's something else I wanted to get your insight on. It was reported yesterday that AJ is going to be training with Robert Garcia. Um, not out in America. Apparently, Garcia is going to come over here to train him for the Usyk rematch. 
you obviously were uh, won your Olympic gold medal while Rob McCracken was the performance director at GB. Why did you never yeah. stay with Rob as a pro? Why did you seek out a new trainer? And obviously, very successful with Jorge Rubio. Well, I was with I, I was with Rob for three and a half years of my one second. Yeah, can you still see me? No, I can hear you, but I can't see you for the minute. One sec, it's got someone's ringing me. One sec. How dare they? There we go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was um, I was with Rob for three and a half, four years of my career, but um, from from the start of my professional career, but. It was just a, it's just a very busy guy with Team GB, and you know my needs I, I needed my needs wasn't getting taken care of, so I um I had to go elsewhere. And what were you looking for when you made that call? Because obviously AJ's been in exactly the same situation. He's coming off a defeat though, and he, he wants to right though that wrong. What were you looking for when you moved on in a new trainer? What were the boxes they needed to tick? A better team. Um, a better team. Um, well, an actual team, to be honest. Um, looking for someone better. <laughs> you know, like I say, like a team. An actual, to have an actual team around you. That's why when I found Shane McGuigan, I finally found I had a good, solid team around me. Um, and I wish I had started the shape from, from, the, from the beginning of my career. Have you got much experience of Robert Garcia? So have you ever been to his gym, sparred some guys there? I've met Robert Garcia once, and that was when I went down to see Joshua at his gym. He <laughs> seemed like, he's, you know, he's got, a good, he's got a good set of fighters. Robert Garcia can, can bring into the corner knowledge, experience, um, well-level um, fights, what he's already competed in and been in. So, yeah, I think I think that's I think that's what it's for. And did you I mean, get having that second voice in the corner guiding him through the fight and, and his experience and knowledge of being on the big stage? Did you get the impression when you were there that Joshua was very much impressed with what Garcia was telling him or showing him? Joshua's a smart guy. He doesn't he doesn't <laughs> give a he doesn't give a lot away. He takes in information and keeps it to himself and doesn't necessarily give it away what he knows and what he's thinking. Um, but I'm sure he would have seen a lot of trainers and um, you know he's. He's made that right decision for him where actually our personality, it's not just about coaching, it's about it's about gelling and getting on with the coach and having them personalities that fit well together. And were you impressed with Garcia? I know that was only the one day that you were there, but were you impressed with what you saw? With Garcia? Yeah. I mean, um, when I was in the ring with him, um, I thought he was, um, I thought it was better than he actually, what I gave him credit for. I thought it was a better fighter than what I gave him credit for. I thought the second I start hitting him hard, he's not going to want to know. Um, you know, but it's, it's one of those things, out, out of the seven rounds, watching the fight back, when he watched the back ones, but I thought I was five, minimum four rounds winning the fight. Um, but 16 months out of out of the ring and uh, struggling to make the weight really didn't play in my favour. And he caught me with one shot I couldn't recover from. Uh, and that's boxing. Now, your um, old trainer, Shane McGuigan, he's out in Florida at the moment with Daniel Dubois, um, who's going to be fighting for the WBA heavyweight title against Trevor Bryan. How do you see that one going? And are you still very much in touch with Shane? I'm guessing you are. Yeah, I, I still keep in contact with Shane. Still, uh, we still trade messages from here now and again, and um, you know, I'll give him the odd call out the blue or vice versa. I like, I'll see his story of him training the boys on social media. So I always comment and keep in touch. Um, if I wasn't busy myself um, at this moment in time, 
I would have probably have gone over to Florida myself and met up with Shane and had a week out there with him myself, but I, I hadn't had a chance to get over. I've had a few too many things on. Um, so, yeah, I've got a lot of love for Shane uh, and for the team, Chris Billum smith Josh Pritchard, you know, them lads. Uh, I've shared a lot of memories with them boys and, you know, we were there together as a team. So I'll always care for them and uh, be there for whatever they need me to. Have you been uh, at all tempted to come back since you hanged them up, hung them up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's the only thing I've done for 22 years. I've done boxing all my, all my life. The, the, the good thing is that I retired on my terms. I still have plenty left in the tank. But for me, the road was getting very lonely. I, like, I had a newborn child that came it's nearly two now. Um, and then from there, I struggled bad to, to go away. You know, I was going away every weekend, daddy having any time at home. And I was getting upset. I didn't want to leave for camp. I wanted to be home with my family. And that was my decision. My decision was that I just, I want to be with my family now. I want to be there for my kids. I want, I want to be teaching my kids things growing up. I want to be there for them on an evening, playing football with them. And, Taking them, doing the school run in the morning. I love doing it. I want to be there for my family. And, you know, I've been doing boxing 22 years now. I'm in a very luxury position. I never need to work again in my life. You know, I've got, I've got great investments. I, I want to be there for my family now. And um, that was my decision. But I've certainly been tempted to go back. You know, when, when things... Uh, I get, get a little bit tough not doing nothing or, or doing something in business that gets a little hard. I want to go back to the ring and, and, and do what I'm good at. But, you know, that being said, I've got my health. I've, I've got a good life. You know, I'm, I'm happy. I, I'm content. Should I say content is the best word. And you look so ridiculously young as well, it has to be said. For a boxer as well, I mean, it's just it's it's infuriating. <laughs> yes, yeah, you know, that's 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 another good thing, you know. There's a lot of fighters out there that continue don't fighting and fighting when they don't need to and taking shot and shot to the head and brain damage and other things that come from that later in life, you know. Do I need that? Not really. But I certainly miss boxing. It's something I loved and I had a lot of passion for it, but. My passion to be with my family was stronger than my passion to to continue with boxing. I understand. Now